Welcome to it. This is Cup of Joe. I'm Joel Villafana, and I'm so excited today because I'm doing one of my favorite things, steaks. I can't wait to show you how easy it is to simplify steaks. No mats, no science, restaurant style, two cuts of steaks, two different ways, right here on Cup of Joe. So I dropped by Malabar Farms where I get my steaks. Guys, Lynn steaks is what I swear by. So I picked up two cuts, a flank steak and a porterhouse. I'm dealing with this guy first. This is the flank steak. It's a lovely piece of meat and it's actually a cheaper piece of meat as well, but it can be so versatile and so wonderful. A lot of different things you can do with it. So I'm doing steaks, showing you how simple and easy it is. You don't need a big fancy grill. You don't need a big fancy restaurant. You can do this at home once you have a nice heavy set pan at home. In the pan, steaks whipping up right here. We're rolling out recipes. Let me show you what I'm going to do first. It's when you, when you have a piece of meat like a flank steak, it's kind of recommended that you kind of put a, a marinade to it. It helps kind of break down. This is a very muscular piece of meat. If you look at it, you kind of see the the, the strains of muscle, so it's, 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 it's a muscular piece of meat, so you need to break it down a bit. This is a citrus marinade that I kind of like to swear by once I'm doing tacos. It's taco fever, uh, and I'm doing steak tacos. I love a meaty taco. So I, am, I have, I would say, about two tablespoons of good olive oil. I told you citrus, so I have a quarter cup of orange juice. If you have fresh oranges, yeah, feel free. Fresh is always better. I, I kind of had box business today, so don't let that hold you back. Um, yeah. A nice heavy pinch of salt. I would say about a half teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Very important ingredient is some garlic. I have my trusty garlic press. If you have to chop it up, make sure you mash and chop fine. More citrus. I want some lime juice in there. Some fresh lime juice. And you kind of just want to whisk that together nicely. And my final bit of magic is some jiro. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like to kind of just localize it a little bit. So just a little bit of jiro will kind of wake up all the ingredients in here. Once it comes together like this, You bring this bad boy and you kind of just nestle them in. All, all the juices of the marinade is immersed. You cover this down and you leave this for, I would say, about minimum an hour. Maximum six to eight hours. I have one that has been marinating. And the important thing now is to kind of get this Pat it dry. So you take it out of the marinade. And just pat as dry as possible. Reason being, you don't want the steak to steam when it hits your hot pan. All the goodness already soaked in here and I'm going to, as I said, show you how easy it is to put it in a pan and get a perfect medium, medium wellish. I don't want to go beyond medium well. So once you get your pan nice and hot, I just have probably about, about a tablespoon or two of uh, good vegetable oil in here, um, canola oil, make sure it's a nice oil that can take some heat. And any flank steak really shouldn't sear for more than 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes based on the size. So this boy I think could go for about eight minutes. I have a little trick that I like to do, a, flips, a flip trick, 
So work with me. It's going right down in this nice hot oil. And that's the sound you want to hear. At this stage, throw a poke him around. Leave him let him do his thing. Two minutes on either side. Two minutes on either side. Check me. After two minutes, nice crust, and you flip. Another two minutes on this side, another flip, back again. So I like to call this method the quick flip. So I give it two minutes on either side, and then flip again, and two minutes on either side. One last flip. I want to allow this just to rest for five minutes. So you'll be at five minutes with me because if you don't allow it to rest, you're not going to allow those juices to kind of just redistribute and you're going to kind of spoil it and make it a little chewy. So another important fact is cutting your steak against the grain. So the grain, if you look very closely, we're picking that up, guys. The grain runs this way. You're seeing the grain running this way and you're going to cut against the grain. So I'm just going to do a nice little slice. I like to do the first slice for me. <laughs> Once you have those, those lovely chunks, guys, you can now create a lovely taco bar. So you have, I like soft taco shells. If you like your shells hard, go hard. I like soft, especially with good steak. When I'm having good lean steak from Malabar Farms, I kind of like to, I like, I like to do it a little soft. So I really can't wait to try the, that local lettuce. But I have some, you, I just have some garlic, some garlic sauce that I kind of just want to put at the base of my taco. This serves two purposes really. It kind of helps adhere all the ingredients and also a nice kind of creamy base to everything. So now I can just dot some of my local arugula. And then I think I can go for my meat. Oh, where you going, bro? And you can get fancy now. I have some cheese that I think I will go with on top of the meat. You could get fancy with your cheese. This is some good yellow cheddar. And I just want to top that with a little tomato and corn salsa. With a little nice, some, some nice avocados in there as well. Kind of again, Mexican on you. This is too easy not to try at home. Get the recipe on cupofjoecaribbean.com. Steaks, flank steaks are perfect for tacos. Drop by at Malabar Farms and pick yours up and try my delicious flank steak tacos. Call in for a bite. Hashtag simplify steaks. No maths, no science. And when you drop by at Malabar Farms, don't just pick up a one cut. Experiment, try two cuts. So I have a porterhouse. And uh, the porterhouse, as I said, is that strip, strip loin as well as the tenderloin. Um, it's a really lovely piece of meat, bone in the middle, and you kind of get the best of both worlds if you're a real steak lover. This is so simple. Don't complicate it. And I'll show you how simple just to get a perfectly done steak. This here, washed, 
patted dry and I just have some simple salt that I want to get all over there. Black pepper. Something I like to do when I'm doing it simple like this, when I'm just feeling for meat. Um, possibly use a little, a little, probably one other little spice. I like to use cayenne because I like a little heat, um, which, which, which you can do as well. But trust me, this is, we simplifying steaks today. Salt. Pepper. Unlike for the tacos with the flank steak, when you know you put it in a marinade and they leave it a couple hours, this baby, once you pat in some nice salt and black pepper there, you have a nice hot pan. I have a very little vegetable oil getting nice and hot here. This steak is probably just about an inch, a little less than an inch. I am going straight in here. And that's always the sound you want to hear. On this side, I'm going two minutes, minute and a half to two minutes. Trust me. You kind of want that nice crust to form just there. So that's why you leave the steak alone. Don't poke it around. You want that nice base of crust, the salt and the pepper, just to kind of seal in the flavor of the meat. This is just about ready to turn. That's what you want. Now, I'm adding a little butter. Rosemary, rosemary. You start to smell that rosemary right away as it hits the fire and hits the butter. And I just want to drizzle some of that butter all over there. One rosemary on top. Follow me guys, this goes in the oven no more than about six to seven minutes and it's perfect steak. You can show off on your friends or you can have a lovely steak dinner. Yeah. Just about five or six minutes in there. I'm ready to plate this up. Very important at this stage, you allow it to rest. Five minutes, you cut into this bad boy, and you got perfect steaks every time. Try different cuts, experiment, get these recipes you saw today on the show on CuppertureCaribbean.com. We're coming back though, after we deal with these steaks, we have a Lucasade cocktail. That's right, I have one of my special bar buddies in the building. Come on back, this is Cup of Joe. Simplifying steaks today. Yeah. So it's time to wrap things up with a little bit of energy. We bring the energy just to wrap things up after all that lovely steak. We're not all the folks at Lucas here, the Lucas family. Yeah. 
kind of pushed the envelope. Well, I thought they were pushing the envelope with us in terms of doing cocktails with Lucasade, not knowing my master mixologist today, Master Richard Atkins, has been mixing Lucasade cocktails home when he relaxing, yeah. normal, normal. Mm -hmm. That's like one of my favorite things to do. Serious. So particularly, I like the one that they have there, the Caribbean. This, I, I'm as well really liking this Caribbean the, fusion. That fusion is amazing. Mm. The flavors, it works remarkable with a nice um, a dark rum. Serious. Or even an age rum. I particularly like the seven-year-old right. that you get with our local distillery here. Fantastic with that. It's almost like a kind of rum punch kind, yeah. of, kind of vibe. Right? And yeah. now there's the tropical, the one with the purple cover. Right. Fantastic with gin. So with gin. With gin. So I do it with gin. I wouldn't say a lot. Right. But one of our go to the grocery, I say, oh, I'm feeling for that today. I'll pick it up. Right. So I have like a nice little range of gin zoom because I like to collect gins. And then I would just try gin in every single thing that I have. With Lucasin. It works with Lucasin. Right. It, right. It's divine. Right. It's really, really good stuff. So when when the Lucasin family thought that they were Pushing the envelope here. You push, no. you push that envelope I, a long time. I do it now a long time. A long time. And you're going to do something for us. I'm going to do something. So okay. I'm not going to do the fusion or the tropical. I'll do the apple because this is the most recent it's flavor. It's the most recent flavor. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do probably the easiest cocktail that you can put together, which okay. is um, a twist on a classic champagne cocktail. Right. So I have a nice little syrup here. Fancy boy, look as if it's champagne. Fancy, fancy. Oh my God. All right, so I have a nice little syrup here, mm. um, cinnamon based, because cinnamon works really well with apple, right? right? And I already nice. infused the aromatic bitters. So the basic concept with your champagne cocktail is sugar, bitters, top of the sparkling. Today now, we're going to do a whole different twist on that. So it's going to be a more low alcohol by volume style cocktail, because I'm going to use the majority of the components that I have here with the Lucasade apple. And then I'm going to just top up with the sparkling wine, mm. right? You go brave, bro. The a little more sparkling wine and wine. Do, 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 Don't you do, be do, afraid. Do. We will take care of everything. So I have my very immaculately chilled glasses here. Immaculately chilled. Yeah, I don't even know if that's a word. Yeah, but... but <laughs> we, we'll work with that. We'll work with it. We'll work with it. So just a little bit of the syrup to the oh bottom. With the cinnamon in it. The sexiness. Stuff. Yes. That should be a perfect measurement right And then we're going to go with some Lucasade Apple Blast, which is very nice, by the way. So you're building the cocktail straight in the glass. Right? Everything is built right here. Right here, it's going to be built. So I put it in the freezer for two reasons. One, because I wanted to get a little bit of the ice elements. OK and also to reduce the carbonation a little bit. And it being as cold as it is, because of the bitters that I have in the syrup, it's not going to cause it to foam up too much at all. Right. So you're going to add a nice little line twist on that. So I, like how you, I like here. how you thought cinnamon an apple kind of really yeah, goes well together. Yeah, really, really, the really, flavor, really, really, really nice. The flavor profiles go well together. Yeah, they work Sometimes really, when really you think nice of together. food and you think of drink, uh -huh. no, the parents, it correlates. The, it the, has the, to. The, it the, has the, to. Yeah, it correlates. It really I mean, most people just say, you know what? Let me just try a... Nah, no. you can't just try a. No. You we must. have to be absolutely certain. Yes. That is the only way it works. So we'll just top it with a little bit of sparkling here. And that is going to bring everything to another level. So this is going to be your main alcoholic element here. And because Lucas here is the star of the show, of course... Oh, you, you, you. No, don't worry. Uh, don't yeah, worry. Yeah. <laughs> you know how when I did that, the cork fly all over the studio. You know? That's celebration. That's celebration, yeah. That is celebration. So a healthy pour of sparkling to top it off. Wow. So I'm going to call this cocktail Bubble Energy. <laughs> you really think it away? No, but seriously. I mean, the bubbles, the yeah, effervescence like, of the Lucasade, yeah. as well as what you would get, the fine bubbles that you get in the champagne, the way that process is, bringing them together. I mean, you can literally look at the glass and look at how those 
bubbles are running all the way from the bottom of the glass coming out there. <laughs> we get so you have your bubbles. I know because it always gives us the stuff. energy. Yes, it, it, it does. It brings the energy. So we should cheers to that. Oh my God. This looks, this looks fantastic. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. So cheers. simple oh my and God. easy. Nice little bit of cinnamon syrup infused with your aromatic bitters. Your apple blast, Lucasade, oh. and a top of sparkling wine. Now, if you bring that close to your nose, oh my God. you're getting that nice, crisp, yes. green apple aroma. And the cinnamon in the background. And then you're getting the cinnamon. In the background. And you're going to get this it's, really nice... It's like an apple pie. Yes. It's like an apple pie. A room for it. It's like an apple pie in a glass with bubbles. With bubbles. With bubbles. Let's try it. Oh my God. Bubble <laughs> energy. I kid you not when I tell you this is probably one of the best things I've Never ever drank. Oh my goodness. Richard, Richard Never Atkins. Never feels. Simple. So you can do this at home. Loads of different flavors to choose from. I mean, you could always try our bubble energy with the apple glass that we did today. Mm. And you know exactly where you can find that recipe. Joel. On cupofjoecaribbean.com. Here you go. But I could inhale this. Mm-hmm. This is it's, it's fantastic. The apple yes. blast from Lucasade. I'm telling you. With your cinnamon syrup. And you're getting that nice apple flavor coming through. And it works yeah. so well. It works so well with the with the bubbly. Yes. And the nice thing with the bubbly is that it's not completely dry. So it still lends a bit of sweetness to it. But it's not overly sweet. And the balance is amazing. And it works. So those of you who think that it's only after you do your workout or Prior to doing your workout, you should have some lucasia to get that energy. Hey. Even if you decide you want to have something with a hint of alcohol, hey. the range of flavors that lucasia offers, fantastic for that. I am testament. This show, you know, Richard, was about simplicity. I am. As we, simple as yeah, this. Yeah, because we simplified how easy it is to do steaks. Exactly. Some people, when they see steaks, they say, well, I, I, I mm, mean, that. so that's, that's a restaurant. We simplified steaks yeah. today. And we showed you how easy it is to do. Look at this cocktail. This yeah. cocktail looks like it's at least 40 US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah at, least, at least 40 US. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for this when they come by Richard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheers to that, Rich. Cheers. Thank you, bro. Guys, hope you enjoyed all the recipes we did on the show today. Get them on cupofjoecaribbean.com and follow us on all our socials. Keep in mm -hmm. touch with Cup of Joe at Cup of Joe Caribbean. Richard Atkins, Master Mixologist. Thank you, bro. We'll see you back here next week.